We do a lot of towing tests at the TFL truck, but we rarely show you all the new technology features. And I'm here in Arizona at the 2024 Super Duty event. And in this video, I'm gonna show you all the latest tech features on the 2020 F250 and F350 trucks, like the Pro Trailer Backup Assist System that's also capable of backing up a fifth wheel trailer. And of course, I'm gonna take the truck up and down this mountainous highway to see how the power from the diesel is, how the 10 speed works, and how the exhaust braking works on the downhill. Now, of course, this idea is not new. The camera system has been in the Ford Super Duty and also a lot of other competitor trucks for some time. But I just wanted to uh, show you guys how this works in the 2020 truck. Of course, there's a camera button right up here on the center console and the first view in park I'm just sitting here in park is this one surround view and front camera view you can change your front views and you can see the cones or other obstacles obviously here in the front a little bit of wider view kind of gives you a peek up ahead you can check your hitch that's always nice in case this case fifth wheel and we have an additional camera. This camera is actually mounted on the back of the trailer. And this is a 35 foot long trailer from nose to tail. So it's really important to see what's behind you. Especially when you put the truck in reverse. First of all, you have the side view, but also behind the trailer. So you can really carefully back up and actually see what's going on behind you. Here's the wiring system on the new 2020 Super Duty. Uh, if you're getting the gooseneck fifth wheel package, you have an additional seven pin connector on top, which is traditional for obviously the trailer brakes and the trailer lights. And then the 12 pin connector on the bottom, in this case, it's also connected to the yaw sensor that's involved in the pro trailer backup assist feature that now the truck has but it also can be used for the rear camera connection and also for the tire pressure monitoring system on the trailer if your trailer is so equipped conventional trailers we have an image based system out of the rear camera can't do that on this truck hard to do it from this camera view all these different gooseneck and if we'll turn different views there's nothing really standard where you have that horizontal where it's easy to, to calculate the angle yeah so what we put is this yaw rate sensor is in, right this, here? in this housing onto the trailer right so there's a couple requirements when you put it on the tire one it has to go on a vertical service okay and two there's arrows on it those have to be pointed out oh i see so as long as you put it on a surface that's a rigid part of the trailer that turns with the trailer that rotates with the trailer you're good to go here it is on the gooseneck very similar mounting position so now let me go and back up the big fifth wheel and see how the system works We're towing the reflection trailer, is that correct? Yes. So say okay? Yes. Detecting trailer. So with the all race system, when the trailer truck's been off, you have to initialize. Now normally if you drive around before you back up, it's gonna do it, but you have to pull like 10 or 15 foot forward to initialize the all rate sensors and okay. find the trailer angle. One of the things we did with Super Duty is we integrated the trailer backup assist system with the trailer reverse guidance. So all the views, the great camera views for backing up a trailer and seeing your trailer are now available with the pro trailer backup assist. Okay. The trailer graphic actually represents the current position of the trailer. The white line represents where it's going to go based on your knob position. Okay. So my advice for using the knob is turn and hold and then adjust based on where the trailer is, right? So Instead of letting go constantly? Oh, okay. absolutely. Figure out what angle you want the trailer at, how much you want to turn, watch it in the mirrors, see where you, you want to go and then adjust it slowly based on where you want to go. And how so right now I feel like I want to see behind my trailer. Okay. Can, I, can I switch back to oh, that? Absolutely. That's the view. Watch your mirror then and uh, go back and forth between what's behind and your mirror to see how the trailer is following the path of the Okay. Cars. First of all, I let go of the steering wheel. Yep. And normally, you know, I, I've been backing up trailers for, you know, yep. maybe 15, 20 years, and I know to counter steer. But, but in this case, if I want to go left, I turn left. Absolutely. So more, a little bit more, more natural. Like a, more like a steering wheel for your trailer, right? Uh -huh. the truck's going to do what it's got to do to get the trailer in the position you're commanding with the knob. 
Okay. One of the other things, if you, you know, you're a little familiar with fifth wheel is, if you turn them too much, they have a hard time straightening back out. So we got the yellow zone here. If you get into that yellow zone, you're likely going to have to pull forward to straighten things out. I see. If you stay out of the yellow zone, it's going to return to center. Though it's still going to overshoot a little, so sometimes you have to anticipate it turning a little more when you release the knob. Uh -huh. to make it straight now. You know what? I mean, I'm watching my mirrors. The mirrors are properly set for me. But, you know, seeing the behind the trailer makes me a little bit more comfortable. Like, I understand, you know, I don't have to yell out, any, any kids back there? You know, <laughs> exactly, right? I think I need to turn a little bit more. Yeah. Ooh, I'm going in the left, red, yellow zone. Well, it's when the trailer reaches yeah. the yellow zone, not What not happens the in the red zone? You're basically jackknifed. Yeah. <laughs> we should keep you out of the red zone. Okay. Are you judging people? Are you like scoring people? No, all? no, there is not a scorecard we go over after the event. That does not happen. <laughs> so I feel like I'm doing okay. It's, oh, you're doing good. it's hard to judge the distance there a little bit. We kind of lined up, straighten it out now, release the knob, and we should kind of So if I release it, then it tries to straighten, straighten me out again? Straighten the truck to the trailer. Okay. And then you can see there's going to be cones that come up here on the back, and that's kind of the end of your spot. And when you get the cones to the bottom of the uh, camera screen, view? Uh -huh. that's where the back of the trailer is. Let me figure this out. So just there. right there. You know what? That, that was pretty easy. You did an excellent job. Okay. Well, I, I, I didn't do it. The truck did most of the work. Well, that's true too. <laughs> <laughs> you see the line of cones at the bottom of the screen? This is basically where the end of the trailer should be. So I want to get out and see exactly where I ended up. Hey, look, it's all straight in the cone zone. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> right in the cone zone. Hey, look at this. So it's still within like a foot or two, but, but it's pretty precise as far as the camera view and what the cones are telling me here. All right, so this bad boy F350, long wheelbase, eight foot bed is a truck I'm testing today up and down this mountain road. And it's pulling what I measured with my feet, about a 35 foot long fifth wheel camping trailer. And Ford tells me that the total weight of the trailer, the way it sits here, is about 12,000 pounds. It looks heavier than what it is, but the payload on this particular F350 diesel is 4,189 pounds. So it has plenty of capacity to tow a load like this. Well, right now I'm accelerating and uh it doesn't feel like there's a 12,000 pound trailer behind me. No, not at all. And that's the beauty of it. And this is a pretty big trailer. I mean, uh, I think it's approximately 35 feet long mm -hmm. and 12,000 pounds. It's not really loaded with any stuff. So no. a lot of people have asked me why 10 speed? You know, I think a lot of the customers previously were happy with six, but now we have a, we have a 10 speed. What was, what was that the, the decision about? With the 10 speed, obviously we can um, have closer ratios between the gears. Mm -hmm. Several benefits on that. One of them is improved efficiency. Um, by having uh, 10 gears instead of 6, we can keep the engine in the optimal operating parameters. Yeah. Whether it's you know accelerating up the hill or decelerating, you know, and with uh, with the tow haul mode, yeah. um, you know, holding the right gear to keep it uh, trailer at the right speed. Another benefit of that is because we've got 10 gears. Our first gear is much lower gear, yeah. so our ability to get larger loads moving, you know, that first five, ten miles an hour is even greater on this thing. So right now, I'm in seventh gear, climbing this hill at about, what, 45 miles an hour, and, I mean, the transmission is so smooth that I can't, a lot of people are worried, is it going to be, you know, too many gears, is it going to be hunting around, but the experience is so smooth, I didn't even notice it shifting, really. No, and it's, and it's holding it at 1,600 RPM. Yes. That, that's where the benefit of a diesel with 1,050 pound-feet of torque uh -huh. has power at throughout the entire RPM range. So I can feel the lane keep system reminding me that, you know, to stay in my lane, which is nice. It also has automatic emergency braking. So I think what I've noticed on this little run, power is not an issue. And transmission is now in sixth gear. Once again, I didn't notice it shift. So plenty of full power. I can accelerate right now. 
This is the five percent grade. Is that right? I think five or upwards of six. A six. Yeah. So it's a pretty steep, pretty steep grade. Mm -hmm. If you want to stop right here one second mm -hmm. and demonstrate hill hold. So this is something on all the 10 R's, so you just come to a complete stop with the brake, take your foot off it, and then just transfer over, so it'll hold it there for a few seconds. Oh, I see, I noticed that. So it won't roll back. This is the launch event for the 2020 Super Duty, and there's a lot of different trucks here, and a lot of diesels. And this is a third generation 6.7 liter power stroke turbo diesel producing 475 horsepower and 1050 pound feet of torque. This is now class leading power. This engine has made it to a 10 speed automatic transmission. And we've done many towing tests with this truck. And you can also check it out on TFL Truck Channel. But in this environment, on this highway that Ford chose, I really want to see how the exhaust brake works on the way down in automated mode and also full exhaust mode. We've already set the engine exhaust brake to automatic mode. Yes. All right, so right now here, I set it with the brake at 30. Just downshifted again. Downshifted it to second. A steeper. Yes. And it's holding you right there. So there is full exhaust brake also which in theory will try to slow me down to nothing, right? So it's not like a, an old school semi where it's, it's off or on. Okay, you know? so it's, it's progressive. It's, so totally, it's changing. totally progressive. Okay, so here's a digital readout on my speed. Yep. So I, I was at about 30 and then I slowed down just a hair because I used the brake a little bit mm -hmm. because of the road. And it'll, so it, it's a combination of the exhaust brake on the motor and the tow haul with the transmission. Like we were talking about all those ratios before on 10, and the, with the 10 gear ratios, we've got greater adjustability with the transmission downshifting as well. All right, that's all great. I mean, the new engine, the new transmission, high-tech cameras and features. Well, how much does it cost? Well, the truck right here, the F-350 King Ranch, it starts at 60520 bucks. That's before the diesel engine. The diesel engine is about 10000 bucks. So then you're looking at 70000 bucks plus four-wheel drive system and on and on and on. You could push one of these trucks to close to $80,000. But of course, that's not the end. I have a pricing cheat sheet here. And an F450 Dually Limited can go up to 90530 bucks. So yeah, this truck starts at around 34000 for a two-wheel drive regular cab. But you could push those prices way up, but also get a lot of tech and a lot of capability. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Are trucks getting just way too complex? Or are these high-tech features like the cameras, like the Pro Trailer Backup Assist, are they actually helpful? And of course, go back to tfltruck.com for more news views and real-world high-tech big truck reviews.